Hello, this is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. And that's eternal life, by the way. Um, just a quick update. I am planning on trying to get out of South Florida. I'm going to be busy probably moving some stuff. This might be my last video for a while. Uh, I know I've said that before, but uh, every time I sign on my computer, I, it should take a, two or three seconds to do something. It takes a minute. I did a complete scan, found a virus, one, and I update my antivirus daily, almost, almost daily. Plus, I have the antispyware stuff, so... Uh, personally, I think it's Google running scripts on my computer, and uh, they were scanning my drives. I could tell my uh, USB drives because the light was flashing. Uh, they're scanning my computer, or maybe they're putting something on my computer. You know, uh, the FBI was paying Geek Squad five hundred dollars uh, to find uh, ch child porn on people's computers when they bring them in to be fixed. Well, there was at least one instance where they found out the Geek Squad, somebody in the Geek Squad, put it on the computer and then turned it into the FBI to get the $500. You know? And uh, if the guy hadn't have uh, had some friends or hired somebody or whatever, had a lawyer, uh, you know, to prove that this wasn't on his computer before he took it in, He'd have been in, you know, he'd be in trouble, big trouble. So you don't know what they're doing. I mean, that's the problem. Uh, there was a guy that was like a paralegal, and he lived next door to a neighbor that didn't like him or whatever, and he worked for a law firm. And uh, he used his router, the, the guy that worked at the law firm, to download a bunch of stuff that, uh, you know, whatever, kitty porn or whatever, I don't know what. I don't remember, but it, it, the uh, police arrested the guy with the router, you know, the, the paralegal guy worked for the lawyer. Luckily, the lawyers liked him and fought for him, and they were able to find out that uh, it was the neighbor hacked into his router and was downloading all this stuff that got him in trouble. You know, it's, you don't know. So, you know, it should take me two or three seconds to do something on my computer, and it takes a minute. I mean, I'm at the point I can't answer comments hardly. Uh, it's just, you know, something that should take a minute is taking me 15 or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. It's terrible. So, plus they're censoring all my stuff, you know, and I thought about doing the, uh, the website. But, you know, I had a website, and uh, it was... Uh, Oh, I did over a quarter million hits before they delete, uh, delisted it. I mean, the only way I could find my website from Google after a while, it was a uh, goth evangelism website. And if you know about the goths, they're the ones that wear the all black. and the Look up Marilyn Manson. That's, that's a goth. Um, at least the old Marilyn Manson. So, you know, they, they booted me off. Their, uh, their website listings. The only way I could find my website was when I typed in the exact name and address. Otherwise, I couldn't find my website. So I'm beginning, you know, and there's a lot of censorship going on. Uh, Amazon's been delist, uh, taking a lot of books off their listings. They won't sell them anymore. Books that uh, prove the, the so-called six million... Jews that died in the Holocaust in Germany. I mean, you know, even from the Jewish-owned figures, they say that uh, six million died and there was like five and a half million survivors. There wasn't even 11 and a half million Jews in all of Europe. You know, there, there wasn't even that many. Uh, you know, and it's amazing. They've got all these Holocaust survivors collecting reparations from Germany. I imagine 100 years from now, they'll still be collecting reparations because they were in the, the Holocaust. You know, they'll be 170 years old, but they'll be 
collecting money from Germany, you know? Of course, that's what parasites do. Uh, Jesus said, I know the blasphemy of those that say they are Jews and are not, but are the synagogue of Satan. That's in Revelation 2.9. You'll never hear that preached in 99.9% .9 of the denominational churches. All right, well, this Bible study is going to be on a stumbling block. Now, the girls all know that to tumble, you know, when you're talking about t gymnastics, you're tumbling, you know, it's a type of gymnastics, and they're spinning around, whatever, tumbles, tumbling. Guys may not know about that because, you know, well, that's what cheerleaders do at football games, guys, you know, they, uh, they tumble around, they, they do somersaults and what have you. So, Let's take a look. So that's what, uh, when you look at stumble, you got the word tumble in the word, inside the word stumble. What does it mean to stumble? Well, let's take a look real quick. All right, Webster's 1828 Dictionary. Stumble, S-T-U-M-B-L-E, a verb. A verb means to do something. Intransitive. Don't ask me what intransitive is. It's something you learned a long time ago that I don't remember. Uh, this word is probably from a root that signifies to stop or to strike and may be allied to stammer. The first one, first meaning, is to trip in walking or moving in any way upon the legs. Trip and fall, right? To strike the foot so as to fall, or to endanger a fall. Applied to any animal, a man may stumble as well as a horse. Uh, and what I love about Webster's 1828 Dictionary, he actually uses Bible references. Proverbs 4.12 The way of the wicked is as darkness, they know not at what they stumble. Second meaning, to err, which means to make a mistake. That's where we get the word error, E-R-R-O-R, -R -R, error. To err, to slide into a crime or an error. He that loveth his brother abideth in the light, and there is none occasion of stumbling in him. 1 John 2, 1. Now this is from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. The guy was a lover of the, the word of God. Um, fur, third, to strike upon without a design. To fall on, uh, to light on... By chance, men awful stumble upon valuable discoveries. Ovid stumbled by some inadventure upon Livia in a bath. You know, it looks like some guy walked into the bathroom and he sees the girl in the bath. Uh, verb transitive, stumble, to obstruct in progress, to cause, to trip, or stop, to confound, to puzzle, to put to a nonplus, to perplex. One thing more stumbles me in the very foundation of this hypothesis. So, you know, if you're trying to get somebody to stumble, you're trying to stop what they're doing. Stumble, noun, a trip in walking or running, a blunder, a failure. One stumble is enough to deface the character of an honorable life. All right, that's uh, the three different things that uh, Webster's cause us to stumble. Now, King James Bible, oftentimes in the first usage of a word, in the context of the meaning, will explain to you what the word means. Now, in Leviticus 19 and verse 14, in God's Torah, as the Jews and Hebrew roots people call it, the, uh, the laws of God, book of Leviticus, for the Levite priests, uh, 19 and verse 14, Thou shalt not curse the deaf, nor put a stumbling block before the blind, but shalt fear 
thy God, I am the Lord. What's a stumbling block? It's like taking a brick and putting it in the pathway of a blind guy that's walking down the path, you know, and then he trips on it. And, you know, stumbling block. That's what it is. Uh, you'll wonder. You'll when I get to the end of the this study, you'll understand what I'm talking about. All right. All right, in Psalms chapter 27 and verse 2. When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. So that right there, the Bible explains the Bible. They stumbled and fell. In Proverbs 3.23, uh, speaking about somebody that walks in God's laws and obedience, it says, Then shalt thou walk in thy way safely, and thy foot shall not stumble. Proverbs 4.12, When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, and when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Okay, Proverbs 4.19. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. Yeah, because, you know, things look good for them, you know, the wicked in the life, but when they get to the end, they stumble and fall, and they don't even know. You know, uh, I heard it once, well, I've heard it many times. You've heard, well, the wages of sin is death, and payday's coming at the end. Oh, yeah. But uh, I've heard someone say that sin will take you further than you want to go, keep you longer than you want to stay, and cost you far more than you want to pay. And I affirm that that is true. I'm an expert when that happens. In Proverbs 24, verse 17, now, this is talking about our personal enemies. This is not talking about us, God's enemies. I mean, there's a difference between, you know, somebody at work that just doesn't like you for whatever reason. Um, I've seen some girls, and guys are guilty too, but I've seen some girls that were just absolutely petty just because another girl was, you know, pretty or whatever. They didn't like her, you know, because they were prettier than they were, you know, or the men would fawn all over her or for whatever reason, you know, not because she was not a nice person, just they were jealous, you know. And uh, we're, there's a difference between our feelings when the Lord's enemies fall and our enemies fall. There's a big difference. Proverbs 24, verse 17. Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth. And let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth. Now, this is talking about our personal enemies, of which I have a few. Mostly because of the Word of God, but what can I tell you? All right, and let's see. Ooh, let's go to Isaiah chapter 8. All right, I'm going to slaughter this name, but uh, what can I tell you? All right, Isaiah chapter 8, verse 1. Moreover, the Lord said unto me, Take thee a great roll, and write in it with a men's pen concerning Mer Shalah Hajbah, and I 
took unto me the faithful witness to record Uriah the priest and Zechariah the son of Zeber, Zeber Chaya, something like that. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived. Now this is Isaiah talking. Evidently, Isaiah the prophet was married to a prophetess. And I went unto the prophetess, and she conceived, and bare a son. Then said the Lord to me, Call his name Meir Shalahabashbaz. Hashbaz. Something like that. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. The Lord spake also unto me again, saying, Forasmuch as this people, what people? The people of Israel. Forasmuch as this people refuseth the waters of Shiloh, that go softly, and rejoice in re reason and Remaliah's son. Evidently, they're not very good. Reason and Remaliah's sons don't seem to be very nice. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many. Ah, we need to take a break here. What are the waters? All right, so what are the waters? You know, if the King James Bible will explain the King James Bible, if you use one of the modern Bibles, well, then you're going to have to listen to some probably unsaved Satanist explaining what his interpretation of what the Bible is. And you got to understand something. Sometimes the Bible talks about the past, then it'll talk about the present, and then it'll talk about the future, not necessarily in that order, sometimes in the same chapter. Yeah, sometimes it'll be talking about the present, then go back to the past, and then talk about the future. And sometimes there's a, a partial fulfillment, and then there'll be an ultimate fulfillment. So sometimes it's a double prophecy. you got to keep that in mind. Uh, you know, in, in the, in the, um, book of Isaiah, it said, unto us a child is born. And it, you know, it was talking about the Messiah. Well, the Messiah hadn't come yet, but it was already speaking of the Messiah as if he was already had been born. Oh, uh, let's see. Okay. What are the waters? Revelation chapter 17 and verse 15. And he saith unto me, The waters, the waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And we're talking about languages, not Pentecostal gibberish. The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. I, you know, I took Isaiah, a class in Isaiah in Bible college, but they didn't really, they gave me an overview, you know, they didn't really prepare me. Uh, I mean, you could spend many, many years just studying Isaiah. Isaiah is so much Bible knowledge in that book. Let's take a look at Isaiah chapter 9 real quick, verse 1. Nevertheless, the dimness, uh, Isaiah 9, 1, Nevertheless, the dimness shall not be such as was in her vexation, when at the first he lighted, afflicted the land of Zebulun and the land of Naphtali. Now, if you don't know who Zebulun and Naphtali are, those are two of the twelve tribes of Israel. And afterward did more grievously afflict her by the way of the sea beyond Jordan in Galilee, of the nations. Okay. Well, this time, the uh, King James translators took the word nations and translated it nations. Other times, they take the same word and translate it as Gentiles. But because they're talking about Israel here, they translate it as nations. But it's the same word. Nations and Gentiles, same word. 
trans it's just translated you know a little differently verse 2 the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light what was that light that was that was Christ you know they're they're talking about the future here the people that walked in darkness have seen a great light they that dwell in the land of the shadow of death that was Israel. They were in the shadow of death because of sin. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath the light shined. Thou hast multiplied the nation, nations of Israel, and not increased the joy. Do you know the modern Bible versions delete the word not? And it says, thou hast multiplied the nations and increased the joy. But, the, but King James says, thou hast multiplied the nations and not increased the joy. They joy before thee according to the joy in harvest, and as men rejoice when they divide the spoil. For thou hast broken the yoke of his burden and the staff of his shoulder, the rod of his oppressor, as in the day of Midian. Midian oppressed Israel in the book of Judges, by the way, if you've never read it. Uh, I think, I forget who was the judge for Midian, but uh, perhaps you've heard of Samson. He was one of the judges. Deborah, okay. Verse 5. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood. But this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Doesn't uh, Peter and say that um, the earth is going to pass away with fervent heat? The elements are going to melt? Doesn't it say that uh, God's going to come and Christ is going to come in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God? Oh yeah, sure does. For every battle of the warrior is with confused noise and garments rolled in blood, but this shall be with burning and fuel of fire. Listen carefully, verse 6. For unto us a child is born. For unto us a son is given. Not a daughter, a son. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The Mighty God. How can the Mighty God be born? Because, do you know what the difference between true Christianity and all the other heathen satanic religions? In Christianity, God came down to earth to be born in human form. Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. God became man. In all the other satanic heathen religions, they teach that man can become God. Jehovah's Witnesses teach that Jesus became, was a created God. Mormons teach that Jesus was a man that became God. They teach that God the Father was a man just like us that became God the Father. Hinduism, same thing. All of them, they all teach that man can become God. Satan's first lie in the garden when he told Eve, and ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And your eyes are going to be opened. Oh yeah, you're going to be just like God. Wrong. I don't think so. So when people tell you that Jesus is not God in the flesh. Isaiah 9 and verse 6. For unto us a child is born, and unto us a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful. Counselor. The, the mighty God. The mighty God. The everlasting Father. The Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Why? Because it's going to be forever, eternal, 
no end. Of the increase of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Upon the throne of David and upon his kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform this. Do you know that this was long before Mary was ever born? And, and, and let's face it. This is when Isaiah penned this. This is in the future. Christ hadn't been born yet. He wasn't going to be born for hundreds of years. I don't know exactly how long. I think it was like six, seven, eight hundred years. Something like that. But, you know, the, the Bible's telling you right here that this is future. The Lord sent a word into jo Jacob. Uh, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. The Lord sent a word into Jacob, and it hath lighted upon Israel. And all the people shall know, even Ephraim and the inhabitant of Samaria, that say in the pride and stoutness of heart, the bricks are fallen down, but we will build with hewn stones. The sycamores are cut down, but we will change them into cedars. Therefore the Lord shall set up the adversaries of reason against him and join his enemies together, the Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth for all this his anger is not turned away but his hand is stretched out still in other words israel's enemies are coming and he's the lord's going to let them to, to to do it you've got the enemies in the front you got the enemies in the back and the lord's wrath his anger is big time against them but it says but but his hand is stretched out still the lord's saying Come to me, my people. Come to me. You know, there's a verse in the Bible where it says, The Lord is slow to anger and of tender mercy. In the book of Psalms, 103, verse 8, 103, chapter 103, 103 and verse 8, says the Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and plenteous in mercy. Good thing for us, because boy, I tell you what. What can I tell you? Psalms 145 in verse 8. The Lord is gracious and full of compassion, slow to anger, and of great mercy. In the book of Joel, the book of Joel has a whole bunch of uh, prophecy in it. Joel 2, 13, and rend or tear and rend your heart and not your garments. You know, when people tore their garments, it was a sign of humility. And rend your heart and not your garments and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful slow to anger and of great kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. In other words, when the Lord says he's going to bring evil, the Lord will repent and turn away from it. When people turn or repent, turn away from their sin. And God repenting is not the same as people repenting. I don't care what the... You hear somebody say that God repenting and man repenting means the same? They're heretics. I don't care what other garbage they teach, no matter how good it sounds. When God repents, it's not the same as when we repent. We have to repent of our evil and wickedness. God does not. God will repent of judgment that he's sending for our wickedness. There are some very famous internet preachers that tell you that our repentance and God's repentance means the same thing. I don't think so. And if I'm wrong, well, I guess the Lord will have to correct me in the millennium. Nahum 1 and verse 3, The Lord is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. The Lord hath his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. 
That's right. The Lord has his way in the hurricane, the tornado, in the storm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nehemiah 9 and verse 12. And refused to obey, neither were mindful of thy wonders that thou didst among them. Who was this? Israel. They refused to obey. They didn't pay any mind to the wonders and miracles that they did, but hardened, hardened their necks and in their rebellion appointed a captain to return to their bondage. But thou art a God ready to pardon. Pardon? Yeah, you know when the governor calls and pardons a criminal before they're getting ready to be executed? Yeah. But thou art a God ready to pardon, gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and forsookest them not. Huh. So, what does that tell you? It tells you that the Lord... The Lord will have mercy and kindness upon those that are who repent, turn away from their evil ways, their sin, their wickedness, and become an obedient people that love the Lord. Back to Isaiah, verse 9, verse 12. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. See, when God sends his judgment, when he finally has had a belly full and enough, it's over, okay? But before that, people, if they turn, they'll, they'll, the Lord will forgive. See, this is why the Lord, well, the Lord's enemies have done all the things in America and Europe to, to provoke the Lord to anger. This is why we have abortion. This is why we have all no Bible and prayer and, and schools, public schools, which we had for 200 and something years. In 1960, before there was uh, when we had Bible reading and prayers in Jesus' name, there was less than a thousand murders in the United States in 1960. Now, last year, there were 762 murders in Chicago alone. Chicago alone, the third largest city in the United States, had almost as many murders as the United States had in 1960, the entire country. What changed? We dishonored the Lord. We've got, their public schools won't let the name of Jesus, but they'll teach kids about Harry Potter and witchcraft and Gaia Day, which is the goddess, the earth goddess, Mother Earth. They'll teach them everything and everything that God hates, but the things that, that, that honor the Lord are banned. And Europe's the same way. I mean, let's face it. Uh, California is the porn capital of the United States. Denmark is the porn capital of Europe. At least it was when I was there in the 70s. And, uh, you know, I'll tell you what, it, it's just, and you wonder why the United States and Europe's being flooded with al heathen aliens that hate Jesus? Europe is being overflowed with heathen aliens. Do you know that Muhammad is the number one uh, name in in England now for, for newborn child, male children? Muhammad. What does that tell you? Yeah. And then in the United States, we're being flooded with heathen aliens as well. God is sending our enemies against us by the millions because his anger the flood of the dragon people it's coming it's coming 
God wants his people. He's going to have a remnant of his people. And that's all there's going to be, a remnant. The Syrians before and the Philistines behind, and they shall devour Israel with open mouth. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. For the people turneth not unto him that smiteth them. Neither do they seek the Lord of hosts. Therefore the Lord will cut off from Israel head and tail, branch and rush in one day. The ancient and honorable, he is the head, and the prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. Now, I'm not trying to be disgusting, but this popped in my mind. When you look at an animal's tail and you lift it up, what do you see? And what comes out of that hole that you see? The prophet that teacheth lies, he is the tail. And if you want to see a, the prophet that teaches lies, turn on the TBN. For the leaders of this people cause them to err, and they that are led of them are destroyed. Therefore the Lord shall have no joy in their young men, neither shall have mercy on their fatherless and widows, for every one is an hypocrite and an evildoer, and every mouth speaketh folly. For all this his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. You know, there's going to be a remnant of people that come to the Lord. But that's it. Verse 18. For wickedness burneth as the fire. It shall devour, devour the briars and thorns, and shall kindle in the thickets of the forest. And they shall mount up like the lifting of smoke. Through the wrath of the Lord of hosts, is the land darkened, and the people shall be as the fuel of the fire. No man shall spare his brother, and he shall snatch on the right hand and be hungry, and he shall eat on the left hand, and they shall not be satisfied. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah, now, Ephraim was the chief tribe of the northern tribes of Israel, whose capital was Samaria. When people try to tell you that Judah or Jews are all 12 tribes, they're liars. They're either they're lying, whether they're doing it in ignorance because they don't know, or whether they're doing it on purpose. That's for the Lord to decide, but they're liars anyway you look at it. Manasseh and Ephraim were two of the twelve tribes, Ephraim being the major tribe of the northern Israel. Judah's capital was Jerusalem. They were the southern tribes, with a portion of Levi and Benjamin. Paul came from Benjamin, that dwelled in Jerusalem, or Judah, I should say. Manasseh, Ephraim, and Ephraim, Manasseh, and they together shall be against Judah. For all this, his anger is not turned away, but his hand is stretched out still. The Lord has his hand stretched out, even in judgment. All right, let's go back to Isaiah chapter 8, verse 7. Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many. The waters of the river. Yes, the people, the heathen people are coming. Didn't we just read that in Revel uh, the book of Revelation? The waters where the horse sitteth are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. I'm paraphrasing, but yeah. Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria. 
Yeah, and then there's people tell you, oh, yeah, the waters are just liquid, you know, H2O. Now, tells you right here, even the king of Assyria and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. You ever heard of a bank of a river? Oh, yeah. And he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even to the neck, and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land, O Emmanuel. Associate, associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces, and give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. You know, something I learned in college. When the instructor said something twice, you better pay, pay attention because it's going to be on the test. Gird yourselves and ye shall be broken in pieces. Gird yourselves and ye shall be broken in pieces. Take counsel together and it shall come to naught. Speak the word and it shall not stand, for God is with us. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Sanctify, that means to, to, to make something, set it apart, make it holy. Um, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. I mean, we're not going to make the Lord holy, okay? But you should recognize the holiness of the Lord in your heart. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. And he shall be for a sanctuary. What's a sanctuary? It's a place of safety. Ah, here we go. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling. Didn't the Lord said not to take a rock and put it in the way of a blind? but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem, to both the houses of Israel, the north and the south, Israel and Judah. And what's this stone of stumbling? Christ. You see, Judah doesn't want Christ, but neither does Israel. And if you don't know who uh, Israel is, read Galatians 3.29. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. The promise was made to Abraham. People, that's it, who Israel is. Israel is a people. It's not a piece of land over in the Middle East that the United States and Europe pumps billions of dollars into every year. People that blaspheme the name of Jesus Christ? No, that's not Israel. Israel's the people that believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus who is Christ. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken. Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. This is the book of Isaiah, people. Didn't Christ have his disciples? Yeah. Verse 17. And I will wait upon the Lord that hideth his face from the house of Jacob, and I will look for him. Behold, I and the children whom the Lord hath given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts, which dwelleth in Mount Zion. And when they shall say unto you, Seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards, that peep, and that mutter. Should not a people seek under their God? 
for the living to the dead? Exactly. Don't the wicked, the evil, the leaders today, the schools, the television, don't they tell you, oh yeah, seek familiar spirits. Seek Harry Potter, the wizard. The wizards, let's go to Hogwarts. And the Lord says, should not a people seek unto their God for the living to the dead? Those that would send you to Harry Potter are dead. They might have physical life, but spiritually they're dead. Seek unto them that have familiar spirits and unto wizards that peep and that mutter. Should not a people seek unto their God? For the living to the dead, to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Let's read that again. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them them and they shall pass through it hardy bestead and hungry and it shall come to pass that when they shall be hungry they shall fret themselves and curse their king and their god and look upward and they shall look unto the earth and behold trouble and darkness dimness of anguish and they shall be driven to darkness All right, so remember this in Isaiah 8, 14. And he, who's he? Christ. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. People, that stone of stumbling is Christ. And we're going to get there, and I'm going to prove it to you. All right, so... All right, let's see. In Isaiah 28 and verse 7. But they also have erred through wine and through strong drink are out of the way. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. They are swallowed up of wine. They are out of the way through strong drink. They err in vision they stumble in judgment. Wow, there's a lot of meat in the book of Isaiah. Turn to chapter 57 and we're going to go read uh, from starting in verse 1. I guess we're going to read the whole chapter. There's a lot of meat here. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. In other words, the good people die, and nobody pays any attention. The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful, merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. See, didn't Jesus say that, you know, have, uh, don't fear those that, you know, can only kill the body? You know, don't fear those that can kill the body, but fear those that can kill the body and soul in hell. I'm paraphrasing, but that's basically, you know, what Jesus said. None considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Well, what's the evil to come? When God throws people in the lake of fire. Verse 2. The righteous. This is talking about the righteous. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one waking, walking in his uprightness. Now that, that uprightness is those of us that are in the righteousness of Christ. Not our own. Well, I'll tell you what, if, if, if it was based upon our righteousness, we'd be in trouble. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. 
But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress. Uh, now they're, they, they, Isaiah just talked about uh, God's, God's people in verse 2. But verse 3, now we're talking about the goats. Verse 2 is about the sheep. Now we're going to talk about the goats. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress. If you don't know what a sorceress is, that's a, a witch. Ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Inflaming yourselves with idols, idols under every green tree, slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks. Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They, they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? In other words, they sacrifice to idols and then they come to the Lord. And the Lord's like, Wait a minute, uh, on one day you're sacrificing the idols and then the next day you, you, you want to give sacrifice to me? Should I receive comfort in these? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither wentest thou up to offer sacrifice. Behind the doors also and the posts hast thou set up thy remembrance, for thou hast discovered thyself to another than me. And art gone up, thou hast enlarged thy bed. Why did they enlarge their bed? Because they're in bed with a whole bunch of false gods. Thou hast enlarged thy bed and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. And thou wentest to the king with ointment and did in, didst increase thy perfumes and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Thou art wearied in the greatness of thy way, yet saidest thou not. There is no hope. Thou hast found the life of thine hand, therefore thou wast not grieved. And of whom hast thou been afraid or feared, that thou hast lied, and hast not remembered me, nor laid it to thine heart. Have not I held my peace even of old, and thou fearest not me not? I will declare my righteousness and thy works, for they shall not profit thee. When thou criest, let thy companies deliver thee. But the wind shall carry them all away. Vanity shall take them. But he that putteth his trust in me shall possess the land and shall inherit my holy mountain. And shall say, cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. Now, there's two stumbling blocks. There's the stumbling block that the wicked put in the way. And then there's the stumbling block, the righteous stumbling block to those who are wicked. Christ is a stumbling block to those who are wicked. They want to trust in their own righteousness. The, the law keepers. Oh, we got to keep Torah. We got to keep Torah. Well, you don't, you liar. You can't keep Torah. You don't keep Torah. Only Christ kept Torah. Only Christ did. It's our faith in Christ. Now, Christ wants us to be obedient. That is true. He wants an obedient people that love him with all their heart and love their neighbor. So the Lord's going to put a stumbling block before the wicked. But the wicked will also put a stumbling block before the righteous. And that's, uh, so when it says, 
And ye shall say, Cast ye up, cast ye up, prepare the way, take up the stumbling block out of the way of my people. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about taking the, the, the bad stumbling block. There's the good stumbling block, which is Christ, and then there's the bad stumbling block. For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabiteth eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit. To revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. For I will not contend forever. That's right. Lord's not going to, there, there's going to come a day of judgment when that's it. Boom. You're either with the Lord or you're against the Lord. When you get burned up with fire in wickedness, not in a, I'm not talking about you people, but I'm just saying, when the wicked get burned up with fire, it's over. There is no second chance. And, and, and you know what? These people that preach and teach the pre-trib rapture, they teach that when the church disappears and the Holy Spirit is gone from the earth, you got a second chance to be saved. All you got to do is keep the law. Keep the law. You got to keep, because you didn't have faith in Christ before the pre-trib rapture, now you got to go back to the old covenant and keep the law. Sounds like Jewish fables that Paul warned against. To pay no heed to Jewish fables. Do you know that's another gospel? It, that is another gospel. Keeping the law. People didn't get saved by the law in the Old Testament. They're not going to get saved by the law in the New Testament either. It's not going to happen. Abraham was saved by faith. I believe it's Hebrews chapter 11 or 12. I forget. It said, by faith, Abraham. By faith, Samson. By faith, Rahab. By faith. Not by keeping law. You know, they're, they're, they're setting people up so that they'll go to the... Uh, if the Jews rebuild their little temple out in Jerusalem and start doing animal sacrifices... They'll, they'll want you to think, well, you know, the blood of Christ just isn't quite good enough, so I guess I'm going to have to go sacrifice a sheep or a lamb or a goat or whatever, ram or whatever. I don't think so, people. I don't think so. Isaiah 57, verse 16, For I will not contend forever, neither will I be always wroth or angry. For the spirit should fail before me, and the souls which I have made. For the iniquity of his covetousness was I wroth, and smote him. I hid me, and was wroth, and he went on frowardly in the way of his heart. I have seen his ways, and will heal him. I will lead, lead him also, and restore comforts unto him and to his mourners. I will create the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to him that is a that is far off, and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. Didn't we read in the Bible that said that by his stripes we are healed? That's right. I'm going to go back to that. But the wicked are like the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, whose waters cast up mire and dirt. There is no peace. There is no peace, saith my God. To the wicked. Turn to Isaiah chapter 53, starting in verse 1. Here's a, uh, some verses, scriptures in the Bible you'll never hear in a synagogue. Matter of fact, the Jews will tell you that this is speaking about the Jews themselves uh, as a group, as a people. Who hath believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant, and as a root out of a dry ground. He hath no form nor comeliness, and when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised 
and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, and we hid, as it were, our faces from him. He was despised, and we esteemed him not. Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. How did he get stripes? You take a whip and you beat somebody over the back, and guess what? They're going to have stripes on their back. No, they're not a zebra, but they're going to have stripes. And with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord hath lain on him the iniquity of us all. See, God the Father laid all the, the sins of the people on Christ. Verse 7. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. He is brought as a lamb to slaughter, and as a sheep before her shears is dumb, so he opened, openeth not his mouth. You know when Christ was taken before King Herod? He didn't say a word to Herod. Not one word. Nothing. So he openeth not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare this generation? For he was cut off out of the land of the living. For the transgression of my people was he stricken, and he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he hath done no violence, neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased, yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He hath put him to grief, when thou shalt make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days, and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. See, people, this is talking about the future. You know, he was wounded for our transgressions. By his stripes we are healed. You know, when people talk about the Bible being all present, all past, or all future, then it becomes all, that's all heresy. Sometimes the Bible talks about the present, then it'll talk about the past, then it'll talk about the future. You got to look at the context. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many? By his knowledge shall my righteous servant justify many, for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore will I divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he hath poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bare the sin of many, not all, and he bare the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. That's us, people. Intercession. That's what a lawyer does. You got the prosecuting attorney, Satan. You got God the Father as the judge. And you got the judge's son for the, your defense attorney. If you belong to him. But I tell you what, if you don't have the judge's son for a, a defense attorney, trouble, trouble, big trouble. Jeremiah 6, 21. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, behold, I will lay, I, being the Lord, behold, I will lay stumbling blocks before this people 
and the fathers and the sons together shall fall upon them, the neighbor and his friend shall perish. Jeremiah 13, verse 16. Give glory to the Lord your God before he cause darkness and before your feet stumble upon the dark mountains. And while ye look for light, he turn it into the shadow of death and make it gross darkness. Boy, that's scary stuff right here. You know, give glory to the Lord. I've, I've heard people say, well, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to live my life, and then when I'm on my death's bed, I'll, I'll come to the Lord. You know what, fool? You may not make it to your death's bed. You could have a car accident before you get to that death's bed conversion. And I tell you what, the, Bible, the Lord says to come to him while he is to be found. Jesus said, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. When the Lord knocks on the door, you better answer it. You don't say, oh, I'm busy. Come back later. Maybe the Lord will say, well, um, there is no later. In Luke chapter 1 and verse 79, it says, to give light to them that sit in darkness and in the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. In Luke 11 and verse 34, it says, The light of the body is the eye. Therefore, when thine eye is single, thine, thy whole body also is full of light. But when thine eye is evil, thy body also is full of of darkness. In John 3, 19, And this is the condemnation, that light is come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Now, what is a parable? A parable is an earthly story that has a heavenly parallel or meaning. Matthew chapter 22, and verse 1. And Jesus answered and spake unto them again by parables and said, The kingdom of heaven is like unto a certain king which made a marriage for his son. Who's the king? God the Father. The marriage for the Son, Christ with Israel. The marriage supper of the Lamb, right? Verse 3. And sent forth his servants to call them that were bidden to the wedding, and they would not come. Oh yeah, they were too busy. They were too busy with their bass boats and making a living and living in sin. And What can I tell you? Again, he sent other servants, saying, Tell them which are bidden, Behold, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fatling are killed, and all things are ready. Come unto the marriage. But they made light of it. You know, making light of it doesn't mean you're, you're, you you're got a flashlight. No, no, no. Making light of it is like, oh, a joke. You know, oh, the marriage is ready. Okay, yeah, I'll be there. I'm on my way right now. Yeah, right. And then they turn the other way. But they made light of it and went their ways, one to his farm, another to his merchandise. And the remnant took his servants and entreated them spitefully and slew them. So here it is. The king sends his servants to invite the people to the marriage. And they killed them. They treated them bad and killed them. But when the king heard thereof, he was wroth. He was mad. He was angry. And he sent forth his armies and destroyed those murderers and burned up their city. Then said he to his servants, The wedding 
is ready, but they which were bidden were not worthy. Go ye therefore into the highways, and as many as ye shall find, bid to the marriage. So those servants went out into the highways and gathered together all as many as they found, both good and bad, I'm sorry, both bad and good, and that's me, the first, the bad, both bad and good, and the wedding was furnished with guests. And when the king came in to see the guests, he saw there was a man which had not on a wedding garment. Now who, where do we get this wedding garment from? Christ. Christ. And he said unto him, Friend, how camest thou in hither not having a wedding garment? And he was speechless. In other words, what are you going to say to the king of kings and lord of lords when you don't have a wedding garment? Then said the king to the servants, Bind him hand and foot and take him away and cast him into outer darkness. And cast him into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. In Revelation chapter 6 and verse 11, And white robes, what's a robe? It's a, it's a garment. And white robes were given unto every one of them, and it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were, should be fulfilled. Turn to Revelation chapter 7. We'll read, we're going to skip around a little bit, starting in verse 9. After this I beheld, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands. Verse 13. And one of the elders answered, saying unto me, what are these which are arrayed in white robes, and whence came, came they? And I said, Sir, thou knowest. In other words, he's asking him, where, where, where does all these people with all these white robes come from? You know, he's asking you a question. And you're like, hey, you know the answer to this. Why are you asking me, right? And he said unto me, and he said to me, These are they which came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Better have a wedding garment, people. You better have a wedding garment. What can I tell you? In Jeremiah 31 and verse 9, the Lord speaking about his his people, his obedient people. They shall come with weeping, weeping and with supplications will I lead them. I will cause them to walk by the rivers of waters in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble. For I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Here's an interesting verse, Ezekiel 3 and verse 20. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. So, when somebody turns away from being righteous and commits gross sin, sometimes the Lord will put a stumbling block before him. And I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die, because thou hast not given him warning. He shall die in his sin. And his righteousness, which he hath done, shall not be remembered. But his blood will I require at thine hand. See, the prophet was required to give those who had been righteous a warning. Oh boy, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 14. 
Matter of fact, I should make this. I'm going to have to do a, uh, a two part series with this because this is just, uh, we're already over an hour and I'm uh, probably about halfway done. So uh, when we come back, we're going to start in Eze uh, Ezekiel chapter 14. So all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to the Lamb of God slain before the foundation of the world. In Jesus' precious name, amen. All glory to him. Amen. <laughs>